Now don't let the size fool you because the small EV is packing some pretty serious tech. But is it good enough against the competition? And is that BYD Blade battery worth the hype? Well, that's what we strive to find out today. Welcome to this episode of The Future is Electric. So I want to start this review talking about what I believe is the most important component in vehicles nowadays, the high voltage battery. I know it may not be your first thought when buying a new car, but when you keep in mind that this battery pack is worth one third to one half the cost of the vehicle, then that decision becomes a bit significant. So is this battery pack better than what's in the competition? Well, here we have a 45 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's the size of the battery pack and it's a BYD blade battery, which means yes, BYD are making this battery pack themselves. That differs greatly to other automakers who generally buy their batteries from third party suppliers, but not BYD. That does come with some advantages. In fact, they're using a cell to body design, which means the battery pack is offering structural rigidity to the vehicle, different from when they take a internal combustion platform and add the battery to it. Here, the battery pack adds structure to the vehicle, which means it's gonna feel a lot more solid on the road. Now, most importantly, this battery pack is LFP, lithium ion phosphate. That refers to the metals making up this battery. This is different from, say, NCM, nickel, cobalt, manganese battery chemistry, we've been used to seeing over the years. Now, I like LFP a lot, mainly because of the charge cycles, or how many times you can use this battery, charging and discharging it, which in an LFP battery can reach up to 5,000 charge cycles, significantly higher than the 1,500 you get from traditional NCM battery chemistry. For more information on the BYD Blade battery, make sure you check out my other BYD vehicle reviews where I delve into even greater details. Now very much linked with the battery is the battery cooling technology, which in this car is a liquid cooled approach. Basically what this means is that the battery pack itself underneath it has a series of channels and then coolant is being run to keep the battery at the ideal temperature, which generally sits of 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Now if you come with me down here, I can explain a bit further. Liquid cooling has come out as a very important factor in EVs. And again, I have to stress, not all EVs have the same technology here. So here we have a liquid cooling approach being employed in the battery pack sitting underneath the vehicle down here. Now this is important for the short term. So say you're driving in cold weather where that cooling system is going to heat up the battery to improve your short term range, aided by the heat pump, which is also part of this vehicle. In the long term, if say it's a really hot day, as we sometimes get here in Malta, then that cooling system is gonna cool down the battery and that protects it against the long term degradation. So eating away from those 5,000 charge cycles we spoke about. So the fact that we have a liquid cool approach here is something I like a lot. Now incorporating that battery pack is the platform. In this case, the e-platform 3.0, a proprietary platform developed by BYD, which of course we've seen across their whole range of vehicles from their smallest, the Dolphin Surf, we've also seen on the channel to their largest, the Sea Lion 7, all using the e-platform 3.0. Now this is an EV specific platform, which allows for a few interesting facts. For example, there's a completely flat floor inside the cabin. And as soon as you step into the vehicle, you'll immediately feel the added space versus an internal combustion platform. That's because of the interesting packaging. The fact that the automaker is able to push those wheels to the four corners of the car. The platform also has added safety features and a lot of very advanced tech, which we'll also see in my driving review. Now under the hood, they have a permanent magnet synchronous electric motor. This is the most common type of electric motor used in EVs nowadays, known for its long reliability and very little maintenance over the lifetime of the vehicle. 
Now it's 170 horsepower, which means you're zero to 100 times sitting at around 7.9 seconds. Quite reasonable for this size of vehicle. Now if you can have a look, this is a BYD designed unique eight in one system. BYD are incorporating the drive motor, reducer, charger, DC converter, high voltage power distribution box, battery management controller, vehicle control unit, and the motor controller all in this one package. My only complaint here is BYD, where is the frunk? There is clearly so much space here that you could have easily added a bit more storage. As for the motor itself, of course, a very unique design. Um, very compact design, bringing all those components together. One thing that gives me reassurance though about this design is the millions, literally millions of vehicles already on the road with this same technology. All right, let's discuss charging. This is a full electric vehicle, so charging is an important consideration. So what I have here is the Type 2 to Type 2 charging cable, which comes with the car. So this side goes into the vehicle over here at the front, and the other side goes into either the public network points or you get a Type 2 wall box at home, which I highly recommend. Now the car, can charge at a maximum of 11 kilowatts. That is though on three phase. So if you have access to three phase at home or you're using the public network, which is all three phase, then you're gonna charge this car in five and a half hours. I'll put the cable in for now. However, I know most people don't have access to three phase and have a single phase supply at home. There, you're gonna be charging the car at a 3.7 kilowatt power here in Malta with our limited 40 amp supply, you don't really want to go more than that, especially if other appliances in the house are going to be running simultaneously to charging the car. Their charge is gonna take you 14 and a half hours. However, if you are able to upgrade your home supply or if you have access to a bigger amperage, then you can charge on single phase at 7.4 kilowatts, which means a charge is going to take seven hours. Now, one more thing though, this car does have a DC rapid charger as well, using the CCS port found over here. There we have a 65 kilowatt charge power, which admittedly is a bit less than we're used to seeing. However, from 10 to 80%, you can charge this car on a DC rapid charging point in around 40 minutes. All right. So how much range can you expect from this battery pack and all the tech that we've discussed? So this car has a WLTP range with this 45 kilowatt hour battery of 312 kilometers. Now that is combined. Combined means that they're averaging city driving where we don't use a lot of power with highway driving where you use a lot of power. Here in Malta, the range tends to favor more a city approach. In fact, you can expect much more range than 312. In a city, in a just city driving field, the car is rated for over 460 kilometers. But which one really is it? Well, that is what I do in my driving video. I set out on a driving range test to tell you here in Malta, in our ideal climate, in our low speeds and in our city streets, what is the real world driving range you can expect from the BYD Atto 2. So make sure you're subscribed because that video goes live right after this one. All right, so that's pretty much it with regards to the tech. What's up next? That driving video. So make sure you check it out linked below or coming up next on the channel if you're watching when this is first released. What's that for me is to say thanks to Maverick, thanks to the chickens who've entertained us today as well. Kazanza meet BYD Malta and as always you the viewer watching at home. If you enjoy the content make sure you hit the like button below, merch down below but as always I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric.